It was not the most successful football season in Wyoming history, but it made a statement. Two of the nation's most respected and most feared football powers, Texas and LSU, were on the cowboy schedule. Those clashes were not routes like past Wyoming encounters with major opponents. They were close, hard-fought games which the Cowboys could have, and probably should have, won. Wyoming's program has been struggling through some hard times during the past decade. But the 1978 season demonstrated that while the Cowboys have a ways to go, they are almost there. Gotta get first down now. This year was positive proof that the University of Wyoming has a young architect in the person of Bill Lewis who is designing national prominence for cowboy football. There was much evidence that the Polks made tremendous strides in just one year. Never was I as proud of any football team as I was the Cowboys at LSU. Not only did they have to fight back from a 7-0 deficit in the first 15 seconds of the game, but they were playing their sixth straight road game against a team who had humiliated them the year before. I have never seen a team so dedicated to proving itself, and they did just that. We felt we could throw the ball deep on LSU, and we did. A long pass from Mark Cousins to Dan Pittman set up one touchdown, and a 56-yard pass from Cousins to John Arnold scored another. Our defense also gave an all-out winning performance. The whole game was an all-out effort that did a tremendous amount for the future of the Wyoming football program. We felt we could beat Texas at Austin. Perhaps our coaching staff and players were the only ones who really thought we could. We fought the Longhorns for 60 minutes. We felt our defensive scheme going into the game was a good one and we felt we could move the ball against the superb Longhorn defense. As it turned out, three fumbles deep in our territory set Texas up for all of its points and prohibited us from having any kind of offensive consistency. Our defense proved to be outstanding. It limited Texas to just one first down and 42 yards rushing in the entire second half. We lined up eye to eye to the Longhorns and fought them from start to finish. Like LSU, the Texas game proved that the Cowboys could play with the nation's best major college football programs. The New Mexico game was probably our most disappointing of the season. It was our first conference game of the year and we wanted to get out of the blocks on a positive note. We moved the ball extremely effectively but we squandered several chances which could have led to a score of 30 to nothing at the end of three quarters. Instead, the game stood just 15 to nothing at the three quarter mark. Our fourth quarter was a complete nightmare. New Mexico drove for a touchdown. Then we handed the Lobos a fumble for a touchdown and an interception for a field goal. All losses are tough to take, but this one was a real heartbreaker. In the next three games, we demonstrated tremendous courage in fighting back from that New Mexico loss. Our victory over San Diego State was highlighted by one of our best offensive performances of the year and two tremendous goal line stands by our defense in the second half. Myron Hardiman had a tremendous day offensively for the Cowboys with 230 yards rushing. We felt at this point that our young offensive line of scrimmage was really coming into their own as an effective part of our offensive team. Against Utah the next week, we made things tough on ourselves with some big turnovers. But the Cowboys demonstrated what kind of men they were by battling back. They left their hearts on the football field that day. After Utah tied the game at the half, it was the defense that rose to the occasion when we really needed it early in the second half. Our passing game was a big plus for us as the offense was able to put 34 points on the board.
I was again very proud of our football team against Colorado State. The Cowboys played the game. It turned out to be an important whack victory for the folks and our second in a row over the rival Rams. We again showed tremendous courage in fighting off early adversity. Our defensive front held the line of scrimmage and helped us control the game. Dan Christopoulos also did an excellent job for us with his field goal kicking. In a ball game in which the winner was to be the Western Athletic Conference champion and the host team in the Holiday Bowl, we were given an old-fashioned whipping at Brigham Young. The Cougars had had two weeks to prepare for the game and they were ready for an outstanding day. After the Cowboys were leading 14 to 10 in the second quarter and trailing just 20 to 14 at the half, we felt we were still in an excellent position to win the football game. In the second half, however, we could never develop any offensive consistency and the BYU offense was most effective. The offense had its night against Texas El Paso. It was the best offensive performance we've had since I've been at Wyoming and the victory assured us of a second place finish in the Western Athletic Conference race. The 51 points were the most any Cowboy team had scored since the 1967 season. Seventy-eight was the year that could have been for the Cowboys. Certainly six straight road games, most for any Wyoming team in history, and the 12,000 miles of travel had a large part to play. But the Cowboys did see a lot of America. Their travels took them from Austin, Texas to Provo, Utah, to Las Vegas, to El Paso, and even to Hawaii. Injuries are a part of any athletic endeavor. But the injuries Wyoming suffered, both permanent and the weekly bumps and bruises, were unbelievable. Before the season even began, injuries reduced Wyoming's depth on both offense and defense. But one of the most devastating to Wyoming's hopes was the knee injury to the record holder from Schulenburg, Texas, Myron Hardiman. Myron went down in the sixth game against Utah and was lost for the season, just 12 yards short of the career rushing record. On defense, at least four key players were lost for varying periods of time. But the most critical injury defensively was to All-American linebacker Ken Pantetti, who missed three games with a painful ankle injury. Turnovers are synonymous with coach's gray hair, and the Pokes committed enough to change Bill Lewis's coloring. 28 lost fumbles and 16 pass interceptions took the Cowboys out of many scoring opportunities and limited their consistency offensively. Mistakes deep in their own territory also put the defense in tough spots. At Texas, for example, the Longhorns' short touchdown drives of 5 and 23 yards were the result of Cowboy fumbles. More than in any season in recent years, the Cowboys were blessed with tremendous individual performances. Seven All-Western Athletic Conference selections, five honorable mentions, five WAC All-Academic Awards, and six WAC Player of the Week Awards were testimony to their ability. But no one received the raves and honors like Wyoming's tremendous linebacker, Ken Pantetti. The Portland, Oregon Blockbuster's list of honors is impressive and well-deserved. Top honor was his election as a first team All-American on the prestigious Football Writers Association team. He also was selected Western Athletic Conference Defensive Player of the Year. Sit back and enjoy as good a linebacker as you'll ever see. Number 34, Randy Hughley, complimented Fantetti very well in the heart of Wyoming's defense. 
The Mount Vernon Washington linebacker finished second to his running mate from the Northwest in defensive points. Randy may have been underrated by the media, but his teammates and opponents recognized his worth to the Cowboy defense. The Wax coaching fraternity would agree that no team in the league was as strong up front defensively as the Cowboys. Tackles Pat Ogren, number 71, and Don Jesse, number 72, were the best pair in the league. Ogren, a junior from Butte, Montana, had his finest season. His range and quickness, considering his six foot five inch frame, are tremendous. Jesse, a junior college transfer, came on to finish third on the team in defensive points. A big man with cat-like reflexes, Jesse was an outstanding player. In the midst of this tackle duo was senior veteran Mike Webb, number 77. A painful neck injury hampered Webb near the end of his senior year, but the Littleton, Colorado veteran has done an outstanding job for the Cowboys during his four-year career and became well-known for his judo-style tackles. Moved to nose guard this season, Webb played just as effectively as he had during the three previous years as tackle. Wyoming's biggest improvement defensively in 1978 came in the defensive secondary. Bill Lewis and his staff brought in some junior college transfers to go along with a veteran returning group, and the mix resulted in the best defensive backyard in the conference. The Cowboys came up with 23 interceptions to tie a school record set back in 1959. Number 23, Michael Dennis, a transfer from Pasadena Community College, led the team with five steals and was picked as a first team all-conference safety. Not a small accomplishment considering that he missed two games because of an injury. Saunders Montague, number 27, was second on the team defense with four interceptions and was selected as a WAC all-academic defensive back. Number 47, Ken Jones, also proved to be an effective cornerback for the Pope. 